Hi everyone, it's uh, Glenn from Astro Bloke Channel. Um, so I'm just in my observatory at the moment um, and I've got my RC8 slewing and basically um, I'm doing a target that I hadn't actually planned to do. Um, I'm a little bit weird uh, <laughs> as an astrophotographer. A lot of the obvious targets I've never really done. So things like um, Andromeda Galaxy and the Orion Nebula, um, I've never really photographed. I've certainly never ever finished an image with them. So um, when it came to galaxy season, I noticed that everyone was doing M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and I was, I'd done, I've done the M106 and I've done the uh, Black Eye Galaxy, and somebody said it's also called the Evil Eye Galaxy, so I actually prefer that name. Um, and anyway, I fitted off-axis guider to my RC8, which it really needed it because I was struggling with the guiding uh, using a 240 millimeter focal length uh, guide scope. wasn't cutting it for the 1624 millimeter focal length of the scope. Um, my guiding was like 0.9, uh, one, and over. Um, sometimes I get it down to 0.8, which was okay, but yeah, it definitely wasn't. Uh, performing the way it should. I've bought the ZWO off-axis guider and the 290mm mini um, so I went for a slightly more, uh, more sensitive camera than a 120 which is what I had before. I am going to do a video on the uh, fitting of the off-axis guider and how I got it all working. I just need to finish that video off and as soon as it's done um, that will be available for you to watch and hopefully will answer any questions if you've got any. I didn't really have too many problems. It did take me a while to set it up, but um, I got the focus in the day and then what I wanted to do was test it at night. So I pulled it out and I thought, well, I need a brightish target and I'll put it on M51, the Whirlpool. Started taking some subs while I was playing about with the guiding. The guiding was amazing. I got it down to like 0.5 and 0.6, so I was really pleased with that. It sorted out a lot of my problems. And I collected some subs on M51, and you know, they were brilliant. I, I, I automatically fell in love with the target, and I thought, why haven't I photographed this before? So I stayed on it, and I've managed to get about eight hours, and tonight, I'm going to continue on that target. I'm going to be adding some luminance and HA. I've already got plenty of RGB. Um, and I'm hoping that with the extra data, I'm going to try and get it to about 12 hours. And I should hopefully have enough data to produce a really nice image. And I can share that all with you. So fingers crossed, everything goes well. And um, yeah, I will have a nicer picture at the end of it all. And then maybe I'll um, start imaging some things that other people have imaged and uh, stop trying to be too unique. Um, it's not because I'm a snob, I promise. Uh, I don't know. I just uh, just haven't imaged the obvious, um, but uh, I'm going to get round to it. Right, let's get on with this uh, evening. Okay, so um, everything's coming in. The uh, plate solving is done. Uh, the camera is uh, just finishing its cooling and we're guiding. Okay, so earlier on, um, a friend of mine <laughs> wanted me to take some pictures of the moon. Um, and I, I was on Luna and I, I took some images of the moon using Sharp Cap. I hadn't used it before. So I'd put on EQ Mod uh, Luna tracking and forgot to change it off Luna tracking and I've just played solved and everything. And I'm thinking, 
my guiding doesn't look right at all. It's uh, just jumped up to 0.9, that's not right. Because it's sitting at 0.49 at the moment, which is how it's been since I've done this off-axis guiding. It's been brilliant. It's actually at 0.44 at the moment. So I'm absolutely stoked with the, uh, with the guiding. So um, we're now taking images of the whirlpool. Everything's looking absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to hopefully uh, leave this running and um, in the morning I'll be able to collect the data and hopefully put together a nice image for us all to share. Yeah, I'm really enjoying Galaxy Season. I um, missed it last year completely. I actually did take a picture of the Whirlpool last year but it was about the size of my little fingernail. Um, not a lot of detail at all. The, um, but I'm really, really enjoying Galaxy Season. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to because I love my, uh, my nebula. And um, because I'm in a bottle six with light pollution, I favor um, narrow band imaging. That's why I've got a mono camera. Um, it's the best way of getting around that light pollution problem. It allows you to still get really good images um, even when you've got all these lights on everywhere. But um, I've not actually had too many problems with the LRGB on the um, galaxies. So yeah, things are going really well. And when I do get back on to, uh, oh, what's something flashed then? When I do get back on to my uh, nebulas, um, I want to try out uh, Dylan O'Donnell's new idea of this uh, HA G. I can't remember what he called it. Hago, that's it. Um, HA G O. So um, hydrogen alpha, green, and oxygen. And the idea is, is that by combining them together, you end up with a real colour image rather than a false colour image of SHO, like the Hubble palette. I'm not sure if it's going to make an image look any better um, or if the, you know, the details will come out as well, but um, it's always good to try new things, so I'll definitely be giving that a go. I won't be doing it on the Whirlpool though, I think I'll leave the Whirlpool as it is. So we're guiding at point five five which is uh, quite nice uh, what we on at the moment we're on the luminance side let's have a look at the okay that's a a five minute HA sub of the whirlpool okay the luminance sub is about to come in now okay nice bit of a ring there so I don't know if that's a reflection or dust mate but uh, the flat removed that so I'm not too worried but yep nice nice sub nice bit of detail there yeah when you think that's just one 90 second sub that's uh, that's nice right time to get a coffee I shall uh, see you when this is all done <laughs> 